The Ukrainian government says nearly 4,000 people were able to escape from the besieged port city of Mariupol during the day. There are plans to send around 50 buses to evacuate more residents tomorrow, but similar plans have failed in the past. Ukraine's human rights ombudsman, Lyudmila Denisova, said people who'd managed to get out of the city were dying of hunger. The Ukrainian MP, Helena Yanchenko, says Mariupol is in ruins. People are trying to find shelters in any other kind of buildings. Uh, they're trying to find some shelters in schools, in hospitals, even in churches. But we see that even these kind of uh, buildings are being attacked by Russians who have nothing sacred. The United Nations says the conflict has driven 10 million Ukrainians from their homes. The UN said they'd either been displaced within the country or fled abroad. Nick Thorpe reports from a border crossing in Romania. Four to 5,000 Ukrainians enter the country here a day to be met by an astonishing array of emergency services, non-governmental organisations, church groups and others all trying to help. It's an international effort with volunteers from Greece, Turkey, Spain, Israel, Britain and other countries. Some of the NGOs also cross into Ukraine here to the city of Chernivtsi, which has been swollen by those fleeing Ukrainian cities further east. More international help is also entering Ukraine. This morning, I saw a convoy from Italy taking 15 ambulances across the border. Other news now, and the Chancellor is facing calls to cut fuel duty as households face soaring bills. Rishi Sunak is due to deliver his spring statement on Wednesday. Labour's Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves says the Treasury needs to be more radical. What is needed is a windfall tax on the big profits being made by the North Sea oil and gas companies right now and using that money to take money off people's domestic gas and electricity bills because everybody pays the gas and electricity uh, bills and it is the poorest people, people on low and modest incomes, who are experiencing those price rises the most. Police investigating the death of a 19-year-old Sabita Tawani in student accommodation in central London have arrested a man on suspicion of murder. Detectives say 22-year-old Maha Marouf is being held in police custody. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been sipping organically made hot chocolate as they visit a cacao farm in Belize on the first day of their Caribbean tour. The trip is to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee this year. They'll also visit Jamaica and the Bahamas. Football and Liverpool are into the FA Cup semi-finals after beating Nottingham Forest 1-0. Earlier, Crystal Palace charged through with a 4-0 victory over Everton. Manchester City and Chelsea are also through to the next round.